Last week we were talking about corporate power. And um, I want to continue with that word. And I, I, like I said, there's so much to talk about it. But when we talk about corporate power, we're basically talking about God himself, his presence, and his anointing. Now, worship today, you can feel that. You can feel the power of God. It's not, it's not you know, sometimes when, you know, when somebody won't pass you and you kind of feel that, 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 that something that, that, that he carries. But, and sometimes we may feel God passing by, but what we want is to capture God, not that wind that people felt when somebody passed by you. And a lot of times when it comes to church in the service like this, it's almost like we can grasp or touch the edge of who God is, but we are failing to apprehend God himself. And I believe God is saying, no, 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 don't, don't, don't trivialize me and don't minimize me and don't make me something that is a feeling or emotion or just a church service because I'm more than that. I am God Almighty who does wonderful things and, 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 and miracle signs and wonders can happen to us. Now, the Lord has been talking to me about how this church is supposed to be a powerful church and I believe it. But you know what? Churches are weak not because God is not there or not because God is weak. It's just they become very careless. They become, uh, they, they become their focus shifted from God to the things around. And they miss the point. And yet God is still powerful. God is powerful in the churches. But sometimes we walk into some services and you're like, man, I, I'm, 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 I'm upset. I'm, I'm not happy. I'm frustrated. Why is it? Is it because God is not there? Now, God is there, but the people in the church have lost sight of the real thing. Rather than apprehending him, they're going for the things that he gives with his hands rather than beholding him, his face, who God is. God is power. His anointing is that power. His presence is that power. And you can feel him in this room. And guess what? Mm, I'm feeling him now. Do you know that it can get to a point where we can come to church and literally people get healed without singing a song or without even hearing a word or without even somebody shaking your hand. You can feel the power go through you. Why? Because God doesn't wait for a song to descend upon us. God comes upon you when you realize who he is. When you peel away the things called church and see him for who he is, ah, my friend, you can feel him where you are even before the service starts. During the service, you can have an encounter with him and walk out of here transformed because you have encountered him, not a song. You have encountered him, not a church program. You came to God, not the Breakthrough Church. That's where the, the whole thing, and that's why, can I also say this? Many of us can be here and not change, not because God is not that powerful, it's because we don't realize the power that is available. And rather than plugging into the power, we're plugging into everything else around the power and miss the presence and miss the anointing that breaks the yokes. So right here as I'm talking to you, that's why I felt the pray because he is serious about this. He wants this church to be a powerful church, not because your pastor is, is brown and handsome, And not because we are multicultural and we can do things in our own power. Not because we are very resourceful. It's because we realize who the source of power is. And that is God himself. Amen. And that's why understanding our corporate power, which is not anything we do or not anything we can bring really, even though God can somehow use us in so many ways, but our power is not in our ability. Our power is not in our wisdom. Our power is God himself in our midst. And he's here. I can feel him here today. I can feel him. It's more than a feeling. You see, when you know he's there, you feel him. And some of us wait to feel. Listen, feeling comes under knowledge, knowing, and faith. When you believe what he says, boom, you feel his power because he's always there. I, this is something that I've heard people say, uh, I, you, know, you know, pastor, I, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been down and out and defeated and I, attacks of all kinds have come over me. And, and sometimes they reduce themselves to powerless Christians. Let me say this to you. That's a lie of the devil. He wants you to believe that you're powerless. But if you have already received God in your life, you are the most powerful person 
in your territory. It's not because of who you are, but who he is in you. I can rule, I can overcome, I can conquer anything, not because of the power of David, but the power of God in David Vaca's life. Don't ever believe the lie of the devil that you're not that powerful. If you have received Jesus, you are a conqueror, you are an overcomer. You prosper. Where man don't prosper, you prosper. What your hand touch will turn into gold. You have that Midas touch. Everything you touch turn to gold. Because it's not your touch, it's his touch through your touch. It's his power through your hands. It's his words through your mouth. It's his wisdom through your mind. And his intellect through your education. It is his peace for your storm in the midst of your storm. It is his knowledge when everybody's foolish all around you. It is all about him and the entirety of who he is. That's power. I feel heat all over my body. That's how I know that he's here. It's not because I'm waiting to feel the heat. When I believe, I feel the heat. And sometimes we you young married couple go home with a feeling that dissipates throughout the week. And we want to come back to prayer meeting to charge up. That's a wrong way of seeing your life. Let's go back to church to get charged up. You have the battery right within your living room. What charge up are you talking about? You have the power right within your own spirit, in your mind, in your house. You don't need a service to get charged up. Get plugged into Jesus inside of you and get charged up. Oh, I'm surrounded by all these people who always swear and, you know, and I'm, and I'm surrounded by all these adverse circumstances and environment that is really bringing me down. You are bringing yourself down because you don't know who you are and what you have. God is so powerful within your own life. All you need to do is understand that you don't need a church service to get powered up. You need him to get powered up. Get plugged into the power and you get powered up. Somebody say amen in the house. You carry him with you. He's with you all the time. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And some question has been posed and I've heard they say, God, where are you? You left me. We say this because we feel weak and we allow our emotion to tell us who God is. And that is a wrong way of defining the reality of God. It's your emotion, circumstances. What happened? What didn't happen? All these things are sinking sand all around you. It doesn't matter what it is. God will always be with you and he's constant. You just need to understand that the God you worship here is the God that lives in your mind and your heart. You go home with that God. Don't tell me you're powerless. Don't believe the lie of the devil. That's what he wants you to believe. Lack of knowledge caused people to drown. And you know why you feel powerless after a great encounter of God's power at church? Because your mind is not renewed. You're, you're more of an emotional Christian rather than one that increases knowledge to understand that it's more than an emotion. It's me knowing, knowing, knowing this thing about God. It's me growing in understanding through his word. And if I can grow in understanding, I will grow in the reality and the substance of who God is. He's always around me. What's blinding me from touching the power every day from Monday to Saturday, from morning to evening, from January to December is my lack of understanding. God help us get back in the word. Read your Bible. Read the word and change your thinking. Shift your paradigm. That's why we are powerless. It's not that we are. We just lack knowledge. And let me also say this to you. If you ever say that I'm a bit powerless and you have received God in your heart, it could be because you have defiled the temple by which he lives. You. And for many of us, receiving God and go back to drinking and womanizing and cheating. Should I continue? <laughs> huh? Corruption. Swearing. This is what we do, and we don't think that, something, that anything is wrong with it. Listen, 
When you receive him into your body, your body becomes the temple by which he lives. Got to keep that body holy. And if you're not feeling his power, it's not because he's not in you. He's in you, but he is somehow suffocated with all kinds of things you put in there. Suffocated with wrong mindset, pornography, evil practices. These are the things we left behind to receive him and we go back and pick them all up again. That's why we're weak. It's not that God is weak. We just don't know how to treat this temple. He lives in you. In the Old Testament, I told you last week, he lives in the Ark of the Covenant, a wooden box. In the New Testament, he lives in you. And when people try to even straighten the Ark of the Covenant, God jumped out and judged and killed them. That's how holy God was in that wooden box that people try to study the ark, God kill them. Listen, if you treat your body well and understand that he lives in you and he, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, God can judge everything negative all around you. You don't even have to say a thing or do a thing. You are holy because he is holy. And he is holy. And you make yourself holy because he lives in you. We suffocate him because we don't understand this thing called the body, the temple. That's why we can't continue to come to church and just go with the emotion that I love the worship in Breakthrough and not change. My gosh, the Bible tells us that everything is what? Permissible, but not everything is beneficial. I'll say it again. The Bible tells us in Corinthian, you can look it up in your own time. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial, meaning you can do everything everything and anything but not everything is beneficial to you and him in you swearing at your wife after amazing time at church that that's going to work against the manifestation of that power cheating on her it's going to work against because he is so serious about you making sure your body is conducive for his dwelling amen and that's what he's been trying to say to us. I have power, David. You are powerful, David, but look after your body so that I can come through whenever I want to. Nothing that you're doing or saying or whatever is hindering me from coming through. Make yourself available. Keep it holy and pure. Whatever that is, we'll talk about it some other time. But just suffice this to know and to say, we've got to look after the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can I say this? If you're sitting here thinking, oh, Pastor David, uh, I don't know who you are my first time here, and I want to be powerful. Well, it's as simple as turn your life over to Jesus. You want to be powerful? Turn your life over to him, because without him, you've got no power. Well, you know, I started a business without him. Yeah, that business will eventually fail. You may have some good things going, but the long run, it may not be going. You may have a great marriage now, but without him, that marriage is going to hit the rock iceberg. You may have a successful career and, and education, but without him, I'm telling you the truth, that thing is going to face some real storms in life. And without God, you, aren't, you ain't that powerful at all at the end of the day as you think you are. Turn your life over to God today. Amen. Turn your life. I'm going to make a call for people at the end of the service. And if you want power, you just have to receive him. He is power. Are you happy? I've got your attention right now. All of you are looking like, oh, good. Don't come to church and make it some light experience. You should be serious about coming to church. Amen. Our God is real. Somebody say amen. Our God is real. Somebody say amen. Oh, my gosh. Oh, shake up a high time. I love him. I love him. I love it. You know what? You're probably thinking, well, Pastor David, what about you? Are you making some adjustment so that God, can? yes, I tell you, I tell you, I won't be telling you anything I'm not doing. I have to make some radical adjustment in my life so that he can continue to come through me to touch you, touch people I talk to, his wisdom through my mind. His healing through my hands, his life through my body. Sometimes I could just touch people and say, hey, hey, uh, you're full of life. What, what, is it your personality? No, no, it's more than personality. It's just God. Ah! You're always smiling. Yeah, but this smile is contagious. This smile is going to turn your cheeks upside down. 
it is anointed by the Holy Spirit. Everybody can smile, but my smile is different. Huh? It's got a touch of heaven upon it. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, you go to work and you turn up with God and you know the power in you. Open your mouth and wisdom from above flows. And they're wondering, oh, you don't even have a certificate. You, you don't even have a diploma. You don't even have a PhD. All you have is a certificate from your baptismal service at your church. But we like you. We like you. We like you. What is it about you? What is it about you that make you different? What is it about you that sets you above all the applicants? It's God in you and his power. It's more than a feeling. It's him. Entirely him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Are you powerful? Amen. Don't talk to me based on how you feel right now. Forget that feeling, my friend. Reality. Is what the word says about you. That's the real reality. And that can change your everyday reality. Everybody gets tired. Everybody have a fight at home. I have fights with my wife. But that doesn't make David Vaca, uh, uh, even when I'm wrong, I'm still powerful. <laughs> it's true. And sometimes we condemn ourselves because we were wrong. Listen, God doesn't change inside of you. And it doesn't change the way he sees you. You fail, he still loves you. You muck up, he still loves you. You did this and you did that. You went wayward. You went away from God. He still loves you. His love for you is constant. He wants you to know that if you can embrace him and keep this temple holy for his dwelling, he can come out of you. He can break out of you. He can change your world through you. The only reason why we, we can influence this city is because of God in us collectively. Your only power to change your home is God in you. Amen. Are you feeling this? It's awesome. Now let me just give you this scripture from last week. And I'm sorry to have to bring it back to you. But I feel to just go back to it. I've got new, new scriptures also. But this is what the Bible tells us. But he who joined himself to the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who sin commits sexual immorality against his own body. Now, he is really basically saying, look after your body. If you have received me, I, you have become my temple. My ark of the covenant is you. Keep the box holy. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? He is in you, God is spirit, and he lives in you and I. Listen to me, there is nothing you can do to make God more powerful. There's nothing you can do to make God less powerful. He is powerful, powerful, for he's omnipot omnipotent is the word for power. What you need to do is to make sure that you gain the knowledge that he is there and keep the temple the way it should be kept so that his power will come through you. This is what he says. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have received from God. You're not your own. You're bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirits which are God. Let me give you a few things here that will help you really, uh, you know, make sure that you don't hinder the power which is God in you. There's nothing you can do for him to be more powerful. He's already powerful. There is nothing you can do for him to be less powerful. He is always powerful. But here's what I believe we need to look after because he's in our body. What do we need to do with our body so that the power continues to flow? Number one, watch what you see. Watch what you hear. Watch what you eat. <laughs> eat. Eat. Yeah, well, if you don't watch what you eat, you're defiling the temple, your body. That's why many of us are sick. And die early. You know that God talks to us about what we eat. It's what we see, what we hear, what we eat. These are the things that enters the body and defiles the body. What do you see at home? Do you go home and watch TV and watch all the things you shouldn't be? I'm not, not that TV is wrong. I watch TV. I watch the news. But some of us go beyond watching what is normal to the things that are not normal. We start surfing the net and we start seeing things that you shouldn't be seeing. And that enters into your mind and begins to defile the temple. Watch what you see. Guard your eyes. Read the Bible that keeps you clean. 
Talk to your wife. Watch what you hear. Listen to what God is saying through people, not just what people are saying and assume that that's God. Watch what you hear. And watch your body. I want to say this. This is just a very small testimony. Coming into 2014, you know, I was carrying 110 kg. As you can see now, I'm actually pretty awesome. <laughs> I love myself. I, I know you probably have issues with yourself. That's your problem. <laughs> I'm a tough luck, mate. If you don't love yourself, who else is going to love you? I mean, grow up and wake up and get out of that. Get out of here. Amen. I do love myself. You know why? Because he made me special. I'm not loving myself because it's David's wealth just puffing myself up based on my own. No, I so love and appreciate the handiwork of God, which is me. And I look in the mirror and I say, yes, you, oh. If I could kiss you, I'll kiss you. And so coming to 2014, I said to my wife, I got to lose weight because I was going for my run and I was puffing after five steps. Even after I eat, I get up and I'm puffing already. I'm like, this is no good. The Holy Spirit, lives. this temple is getting weak. And you know what? With excess food and we're eating things we shouldn't be eating, you're going to cause your body to be sick. And if you die before your time, that's your fault, not his fault. And that is why we got to watch this temple. Amen. And some of you will be saying, no, it's hereditary. I can't get rid of it. Get rid of it. I tried, I tried. And you pay so much money on TV to try this program and try that program. Why don't you come and see me? Give me your money and I'll give you my program. I've lost 10 kilos in three months and I've kept them off for three months. It works. If you're, you know what, what motivates me to lose weight and be healthy? It's the fact that he lives in me. That's my motivation. He lives in me. What motivates me to keep my mind clean? He lives in me. What motivates me to live clean and always make sure that I don't cheat on my wife and everything? He lives in me. He is holy. And I've got to make sure that his temple is holy. And it requires, and, and I'm talking about all different aspects of our body, mind, spirit, everything else. And if you're smoking, I feel sorry for the Holy Spirit. Start coughing inside of you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying don't, don't smoke. I'm just trying to get you a picture to help you stop smoking. If you're getting drunk, I feel the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you probably think, well, do you have anything against wine? I've got nothing against anything. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Come on, use your wisdom. I'm not telling you stop this, stop this. That's religion. All I'm saying is, if you know who's inside of you, keep that house clean. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't care what you're going to do. Keep it clean. <laughs> Are you okay? You're looking angry at me. What are you angry at me for? I don't like this church. They always telling the truth. Good, because truth sets you free. Yeah, this church rubbed me up the wrong way. What, you want people to rub you up the way you want them to rub you up and th then you don't change at all? Man, that's, a, that's that. you know what? To me, the way I see people who don't change, they smell bad. I don't care how much perfume you put on, you smell, you stink. I, you, I hope you understand where I'm coming from in saying that. I'm not saying you have B.O. or I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just, your spirit smells bad. And I know many Christians who just think they know it all. They smell bad. No humility, no brokenness, no humbleness. They just think they know it all. Man, you smell bad. Stay away from me. My nose is too precious for your smell. <laughs> because the fragrance of God comes from within, not the cologne you put on. Talk to me. Are you okay with this? And if you young girl tried to impress a guy, stop putting all the stuff on your face. Put Jesus in here. Put the word in here. I tell you this, a man is attracted to a woman is full of God. They may be attracted to you because of, you know, the outward thing. But you know what? And later on, they begin, they begin to realize the real you. It's the, the thing in here. If it's not God, it's going to be ugly. 
And they'll run away, file for divorce because they're like, I married an angel. Now I realize I married a demon inside an angel. That's reality of life. You may be thinking, well, you was, I'm telling you, I have seen these things. <laughs> I have talked to many people who thought they married the, you know, like the dream girl of my life. Realize later, she ain't the dream girl. There's a devil in disguise. Without Jesus, man, inside of you, you're always going to give out bad things. We've got nothing good going for our lives without God. Am I okay? Are you okay with me? Sorry, I mean, I'm okay, but are you okay with me? And young girls, look for a man that is full of God. I'm telling you the truth. He may have money. He may have the, you know, he may have the tattoos like Sonny Bill Williams. I don't even know why you guys tat your body. How stupid. Now, I better, I better, I better justify that because many of you actually have tattoos in here. I love it. I love tattoos. The only reason why I have not put any on my body, because I always remember my, my, my dad, you know, I was me and, and, and Richard were adopting, we always remember him saying, if you put tattoos in your body, you are not going to heaven, you go to hell. I was so afraid of going to hell, I didn't put anything on my body. I know that that was the way they see it, but you know what? Why do we have to try and follow the trend? Why not just be yourself? I thought I'd just leave that there for you to think about. I've got five minutes and I close. The first, the, the, the last one on this is, watch what you see, watch what you hear, watch what you eat, and also watch where you position your body. Some of you young people here, if you really want the power to continue the flow, stay away from places that you know that's going to cause you temptation. Like if you put a big chocolate cake in front of you and your problem is food, why do you sit at that table? I'm going to conquer this. I'm going to conquer this. So you sit right in front of that nice chocolate cake with juicy thing flowing down there. And you're like, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the chocolate. I don't care how much you rebuke the chocolate. That chocolate is going to stuff you up soon. Get away from the chocolate. Find a table where there's just salad and lettuce and tomatoes. And <laughs> Watch where you position yourself. You say, well, you know what? I want to keep this body clean at the temple. And then you end up going to the clubs. Every Saturday, you can't wait to go to places where you know you're subjecting your body to things that you're going to end up doing and regret later. I'm going to fast from, from Facebook. The first thing you do in the morning is Facebook. I'm going I'm 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 to clean my ears. I'm going to listen to those people. The first thing you do the next day, ring up the very people that always talk rubbish in your ears. I don't get it. We want to change, but we don't want to pay the price for change. Are you still okay with me? I've got five minutes. This is the real five minutes. Are you enjoying this? How many of you here said that you want power? How many of you said you want power? You know what? You don't need to pray for power. You're already powerful. Stop defiling your body. That's really the problem. Stop defiling your body. You don't need to pray for power. Oh, give me power because I'm already in you. Oh, God, give me power. What power? I'm already in you. Oh, power, power. And all we hear, power, power. Ping, pong, ping, pong. Ha, ha, ha. The power is already in you. Do something with your body. And change your mind. Amen. And please, for goodness sake, young ladies, stay away from the clubs. Unless your grandfather is going with you, keep an eye on you. <laughs> And all the people say, Amen. I've got four kids. They're growing up really fast. I said, to you, oh my gosh, the world we're living in today. I'm sure one day my son kids is going to come. Daddy, I mean the boys, but I'll hang out. You know they? You know they? <laughs> I'm like, I'm the pastor. What am I going to say? Oh, Jesus. And I said, and I was teasing him the other day. I said, okay, you know, my daughter Omega, you know, they're starting to talk the whole relationship thing and blah, blah, blah. You guys there? I you know, love you too. <laughs> And you know, I'm thinking, how am I going to deal with a situation like this? And I teased them the other day and I said, if you want to go clubbing, I'm coming with you. I'll sit outside and wait for you and your friends to come out. He goes, no! I said, yes, that's what you get. <laughs> for being a pastor's son, you know, being a PK. I'll give, me one, I'll give you one scripture and I'll close. 
I'm sorry, I couldn't finish my sermon today because I feel to take my time to really outline these things that I didn't get to say last week. Corporate power. Here's what the Bible tells us, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17. Now, this is talking about us, the church, not just the individual, but all of us. Don't you know that you are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you together? Breakthrough church, hear me, breakthrough church. The Holy Spirit came in our service and he wants to continue to go with us even after the service. Even when mom and dad go home, he wants to go with you because together, collectively, we become more powerful. The power multiplies because it's all of us forming this temple called the church. And God said, I want to live in the church. My spirit lives in the church. And look at how serious he is with the church. He even gives us warning about defiling the church. He says, if anybody defiled the temple, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy and you are that temple. And that is why, if I could finish by saying this, that's why I'm against people gossiping in this house. I'm against people getting nasty things on Facebook against other people. I'm against people trying to ruin relationship and ruin marriage as it is not on. We're supposed to build a collective temple that is holy and pure. And if you want to mistreat yourself, knock yourself out, but don't bring that attitude to the house of God. Keep your mouth from saying things against people. Build them up. Pray for them rather than cursing them in your prayer. And please don't, uh, you know, it says don't defile. Whatever you do that is going to hurt the church, don't do it. Because there is power in this house for all of us. It's like me cooking this massive pot of soup. And I'm putting garlic and, 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 uh, and potatoes and chicken and mixed with, with, uh, with beef. And, you know, mix the whole cow, everything in there. And water and sauce. And I'm stirring it. And I'm saying to the church, church, come and eat. This is precious cooking. I'm the top chef in this area. Come and eat. And then somebody comes in and put his foot in that thing. <laughs> While everybody's going, walking away with a nice bowl of soup from this amazing collection, concoction of heavenly recipe, some idiot walks in and starts putting his foot in the pot. What are you doing? You are ruining it for everybody. Don't you know that the temple of God is us? Why do you have to swear against people? Why do you have to say nasty stuff against people? Why do you have to do things to ruin relationship? Why aren't you not giving when we're all giving to get our own building? And when we get the building, you're the first one to jump and sit in the front. <laughs> and you have not put anything in the pot. But your filthy foot that stinks. Amen. I'm not saying that you are filthy. I'm just, you know, just using pictures of people who are not here to get the message across. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You want a powerful church? Don't defile the church. And don't speak against me. Pray for me because I'm only human just like you. <laughs> and who knows, God might be merciful enough to, for, to you through me that I might come and buy you lunch. Why do you have to fight me? Why do I have to fight you? Why do we have to fight each other? We are all here because we want the power of God in Breakthrough Church. Say yes if you believe it. Say yes if you believe it. We want to create a temple where people from outside can come and be healed and taste the power of God and the goodness of God because the people of Breakthrough understand that we together is the temple of God. The power is here. Ah! Oh, I feel so powerful. Please, I'm asking you, we are a family. We are brothers and sisters, and we have a house called Breakthrough. Let's build together. Let's love together, serve together. Let's pray together. Let's give together. Let's build this church called Breakthrough so that others can come in. And wow, wow, what a church. And the last one he says, for you are the temple of the living God. God said, I will dwell in them and I will walk among them. Oh, you know, when we build a house where God is so comfortable, he is feeling really welcome. Not only that he turns up on Sundays, but he goes with us in everything we do. 
Even our children can feel his hands when they do their exams. He doesn't want to just live. He wants to walk with us. But that's the benefits when a church understands why the temple collectively is important. Because the power wants to flow. He wants to live. I feel him now. But God keeps saying to me, tell your people, I don't want to just turn up on Sunday. I want to go with them after church. I want to go with their kids. But they've got to create this thing for me to be there all the time, feeling welcome. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them. So whatever it is that coming out from among them is to you, touch no unclean thing. You have to pick that up with Jesus. Ask him, what do I need to do to come clean? What do I need to do to not defile myself and the collective temple for your power's sake? He will tell you. All I'm saying, church, is this is a great church. Let's love this church and let's build it with wisdom and integrity and understanding. Amen? Can I ask you a question before I close? You love Breakthrough? I know you love God and that's great because we know we love God first. But I want to be part of a house that people don't fight. I grew up in a home where the fight was norm. Punching each other was norm. Getting drunk, getting wasted, throwing money all over the place was normal. I don't want a church house like that for you and for me and all our kids. I want a house that our kids feel safe. But mom and dad, let's wise up and build wisely. Amen? I love the going out last night. All the couples went out last night uh, to Eat Street. I think we're going to create one here called Eat Sleep Street. I just love the harmony, the joy, the peace, the fellowship. I saw that and I went, this is healthy. I want our church to have the same spirit. We're here for each other. We're here for a temple. Let's build God a house that he loves and want to live. Amen.